All right, guys. Here's a um, another video on how to reduce nitrates in a saltwater slash reef aquarium. This tank is cycling right now. It's just on out here because I have a stand and it it's just it's stable. It's not going to be shaken like this and stuff the whole video. I'll go to my f my room where I have my five gallon reef tank that's been set up for six seven months now, close to that. So yeah. I have a video on how to reduce nitrates in a freshwater aquarium. They're pretty much the same, just kind of different in a couple ways. Um, the biggest difference is actually what you could use to get those nitrates out. You can, um, actually what you can do is a thing called it. The biggest way that helps people that do not have a refugium, it's best if you have a refugium, and this thing called a protein skimmer, which basically sucks in some of the water and then has a pump and just uh, blows in air until it just skims out all the excess proteins and bad nutrients in the water. That's generally the way they do it. Um, so that's that's the, an, a great way to get rid of them. They're Depending on the brand and how what it's rated for, that's what's the difference between like a $100 one and a $300 one. Um, what I would recommend though is going almost two steps above what you're it'd be rated for. So if, say I have this thirty gallon, I would probably try and get a ninety gallon one. So that'd be twice. It does, the math doesn't work out, but it's t ugh, okay. I'm adding sixty extra gallons to it, and what it or the protein skimmer is rated six gallons over what I need. It's just to help out with the bio load. Say so you have a thick bio load. It'll just easily handle that and re keep your nitrates low. Another way for a uh, saltwater tank is if you have a sump refugium or refugium, which is this thing back here that I have, this big old black thing. It's this, this. It's just that, and you usually have a little light over it, and you can put Shadomorpha right in there. And what that, it's an algae, and what that does, it, um, it'll take out, or it uses it to grow. It uses the light to grow and it eats it eats the phosphates and nitrates and other nutrients you don't want in your tank. It'll use that for its own benefit to grow. I would recommend only one type of algae that'll do that because otherwise because you don't want algae to compete with each other. It'll reduce the effectiveness of them. And then another way is it's a four inch deep sand bed. I'm not sure on the exact mechanics of it, but it's like the I think it's the anaerobic bacteria. Anaer anaer anaerobic bacteria um, it, I think it eats the, I don't know, it eats, it denitrifies the water, I don't know how that works, but all I know is if you have a four inch deep sand bed, it's like a nitrate sponge, basically. That's what that does. Um, another really easy way that I've mentioned in any other video, um, is, I'm gonna move to my room, the reef tank. The easiest other way, too, is don't overfeed. It's really easy. Just don't overfeed, don't overstock, especially with salt water, because like, if you have corals, you definitely don't want to overstock. All right, now that we're here, I'm going to try and put it on a stand and I'll have a look. All right, that doesn't look good. All right, I'll just explain this for a second. So if you see this five-gallon tank, it's really small, which means I can quickly have a nitrate spike or ammonia and nitrate spike really quickly. So, but I don't overfeed. What I do is I drop in probably two little things of mysis shrimp, let the fish eat it, if I see he ate it all the way, I'll drop in a couple more, if I see one float down, I'm like, ah, no big deal, it was only one, <sighs> I have my hermit crabs there, or any other little critter to eat it, um, yeah, that's another great way, don't overfeed, it's easy as that, keep up with your water changes is another easy way, um, another way is, um, don't overstock your tank. That's what you... Most people do that. They say, oh, I want this fish, this fish, this fish, this fish. It really quickly can add up. Like, if you get five of these guys for a 30, you'll be fine. You could have a couple of inches. To, you, have a, you have some room to spare in that tank. But if you get, say, five um, wrasses, they generally, depending on the wrasse, so you get a medium-sized one. If you get five of those and you buy them as babies, you're going to think, okay, they're going to stay that small. No, they will quickly grow on you and... You'll quickly be overwhelmed with nitrates, you'll be able to keep up, especially if you have a busy schedule. 
So you just need to kind of watch the fish growth and know what size it gets to. Do your homework on before you buy a fish. So yeah, um, I'm not sure about this one, so someone's going to need to tell me in the comments. I believe corals also maybe suck up a little bit of the uh, nitrates. Cause I believe zoos do a little bit too. They like a couple. They like a little bit of nitrates in the water. Um, so I think that's gonna be it. That's the easiest way to keep nitrates down in your reef aquarium. There are also a couple of other ways. I think. G no, I don't think GFO does. It's a reactor that I don't. It's kind of technical. Easiest way is protein skimmer, 4-inch deep sand bed, and the Chetomorpha algae. They just put all three of those into a system. So if you have a sump refugium with the protein skimmer in one of the chambers, Chetomorpha and the refugium, and have a 4-inch deep sand bed in your display and the refugium, you'll be set. You will almost... You're going you're gonna to be set like New York Stilo. He knows what he's doing. He, is, he has not done a water change on his 90-gallon tank for quite some time, I believe. So check out his channel. He's got He knows his stuff. Um, that's pretty much the easiest way, simplest way, very unorganized way of how I explained it to keep the low nitrates in your tank. So just kind of watch what you're doing. So yeah, please rate the video, comment the video, and subscribe.